All right, Dave, we're going to go live here in two seconds. Great. Welcome to DDC Live for May 28, 2020. We're excited to have uh, David Hamley of Adobe with us here tonight. Um, I hope you all are doing well. Um, we can meet in person, so the next best thing for us to do is meet together virtually. Uh, Dave, how's it going, man? Hey, man, it's going great. I think uh, you know all of us are doing well. Um, all the customers I'm talking to are doing well. Everybody's uh, adjusting way better than I thought as far as remote editing and just remote workflows go. So how's the Adobe family? Uh, the Adobe family's doing good. I mean, we're, um, I guess, you know, fortunate to be where, working in the software industry, you know, so I think a lot of us are happy about that. But uh, yeah, overall, I think, you know, Adobe's been um, outstanding through, the, through this whole process. You know, our offices are pretty much shut down worldwide, except for the, uh, the essentials, of course. And, uh, you know, remote work is happening, work's getting done. So it's great. Cool. Uh, so what... Um... What are we going to cover tonight? What are, what are, what are some of the new things that um, yeah. uh, Premiere uh, 14.2? And I know yeah. things will be happening a little bit more faster with Adobe right now. So um, Yeah, we're going to talk about that too, I think. Why, why is everything happening so fast? What's the deal with that? So yeah, I figured let's, let's talk a little bit about you know, remote workflows and how some of that's going. Some users might have some, some questions and just um, different uh, ideas about how some of this is working. There's a lot of misconceptions about uh, remote workflows because I think a lot of it's changed. So I thought we'd touch on some of that. And then, yeah, let's just dig into some of the apps. I mean, we've had 14.1, uh, which came out just a couple of weeks ago. That was sort of what people refer to as the NAB release. We can show a little bit of what's in that. We just released 14.2. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some other stuff that's, uh, that's kind of com coming down the road, or at least as much as I can. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, what's known as beta prime, because I think that's, a, that's another really good, uh, good topic. So uh, we've got, we got a fair amount of things to talk about tonight. So definitely, um, I think the beta is a big deal, because uh, you guys have always uh, had NDA yep. private betas, but now you're kind of moving in the direction of beta for all. And I know we're going to get into it later, but if I'm correct, you could run the beta side by side with the... Uh... Absolutely. Yeah, so the idea is, especially with Premiere, if you're in the 14 family, that's the version we're, we're at right now. So if you're in 14.2 and we come out with another version, you can open up, say, the beta version, which is 14.3. You can open up the beta version that you're working on in 14.2. Of course, we really don't recommend that, but the idea is to work on project compatibility within the same family. So when we come out with the you know, 15, and beyond, you know, that, that's got to stick within that, that family because there's going to be a lot of codecs and a lot of features uh, that we add where it's going to be hard to kind of go too far backwards, right? So we're kind of committing just for that year period to sort of say, okay, let's let people go back and forth. And the idea of the public beta, as we'll get into when I show that to you, is really not to have people just be, be guinea pigs. You can be a guinea pig if you want to be a guinea pig. We're trying to release things when, they're, when we think they're pretty close. And uh, also you might get a new camera. Maybe you got a new uh, Canon camera that, you know, there, there, there are some new raw formats that are out. And I happen to know the beta supports some of the new format. You're like, you know what, I got this camera. I just want to get in and start trying it and see what's going on. So I, I think it's great for that. Um, so uh, especially as we, uh, as we said with Kodak, in some cases just getting exports done faster, which we'll talk about that uh, tonight as well. So um, let me remind the folks that's in um, attendees, if you have any questions, please put your questions in the Q&A pod and not the, um, the chat. So make sure if you want me to see those questions, um, put it in the Q&A pod. Also, um, we are pushing to Facebook, but I'm not gonna waste too much time jumping out to Facebook, it's just for a watch, but all the Q&A happens in Zoom. So Dave, um, why don't you go ahead and boot up and yeah. into some demo in. And again, if you guys have questions, just go ahead and shoot. So I will just share screen and let me know, uh, George, if that comes up okay. 
That looked pretty good. Yep. And just a reminder, you guys might need to adjust your screen. Um, if you cannot see the full screen, just go ahead up to split view, to your view options, and you want to put your window in split view or side by side. So let's talk about um, a couple of things um, as I as I as I was kind of getting to before actually before I jump into this. Just saw that. Let's let's talk a little bit, George, about remote workflows. Remember, you you and I were talking about that. By the way, how's your home office coming along, George? My home office is, is excellent. Still need some uh, some love, but... You got all the toys. It's good. I've been working from home, so I've been able to live stream out. You know, we have good connection here in DC with Fios, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I just got my Fios upgraded, too. So uh, I've been working out of this home office almost 30 years, I guess. And uh, I actually have an editing bay. Uh, so this is where I'm working out of right now. So... Uh, Lots of monitors. That's the, the, the webcam that I'm using. Um, I set up for you today. I know you're a Blackmagic fan. So I've got uh, an awesome Ursa 2 uh, sort of propped up there, giving us an awesome picture tonight. So uh, lots of monitors. And I do a, a ton of testing here. It's not really my job, but it keeps me uh, on my toes. Hey, Dave. Uh, so a lot of HDR workflows. Yeah, man. Uh, can you, um, Jason, can you guys type in the chat pod that you could see Dave's screen? looks like it's coming across okay for me they could see it perfect dave that's, that's, yeah that's insane man i know well, you know it's 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 uh, you know friends of the industry you know you know everybody uh, really really wants to make sure everything's connected everything's working you see an rtx titan there i've been doing some work with that with that card you know there's you know a, just a lot of testing that goes on you know i'll say you know, AJA is a great partner. Black Magic's a great partner. I've been doing a lot of work on the Ultra 4K Extreme, which I'm happy to report's working just fantastic. It's actually feeding that large LG HDR monitor on the wall, which I'll do proofing on. And, uh, you know, 8K monitors and all, all, all the goodness. So you'll, you'll see some of this in action tonight for how, how I sort of go through and vet a lot of this stuff. So one of the things I thought we'd start with is I get a ton of questions on just how do I how do I screen share, um, uh, or sorry, how do I do um, remote workflows from home if I've got to tap into the office, right? And there's a lot of different ways to do that, and we'll we'll show you a couple of those tonight. But one of the things that everybody's getting you know getting concerned about is it's really hard to do Mac to Mac uh, control. So if you're a Mac person versus a Windows person, and I'll show you both, how do I really tap into you know, maybe that that new iMac Pro that I have in the office, or or maybe I got a Mac Pro uh, just before COVID uh, happened, and I can't have access to it. So there, there's a couple of products. One is SplashTop uh, Personal, which I don't really recommend if you're in the enterprise. I would recommend you get SplashTop Enterprise. Um, it's actually really really fast. I have a lot of corporate customers using that. You know, another one's um, Jump Desktop, which I just happen to have running uh, here. So just so you know kind of how that works is this is now allows me to attach to my Mac, uh, my Mac Pro. Um, and I can just go over here and I can, uh, let me move your monitor down here. I can just go over here and just start, you know, launching whatever um, products I need to launch. Uh, this particular case, I'm working on some 8K uh, afterburner video. So this is uh, an afterburner project that I, I can just go in when I'm when I'm doing after, afterburner testing, and this is um, turn on you know five layers of 8K video with uh, with afterburner here. If I can actually get these layers to turn on, and so Dave, does that mean you have the new Mac Pro? Uh, I don't, uh, uh, not really. Uh, I'll say I have it, and my buddy that's let me sort of use this, I'll say, you know, uh, what do they say, nine, nine tenths? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give a, um, uh, let me uh, call that one back up here, sorry. Uh, Fair enough. Right here, yeah. I'll just say I'll, uh, I'll give a shout out to Sonny at an MBS because it's actually his. Um, it's his demo unit on the floor, but I, and I've been testing on this thing for about the last two months. So a special thanks to him for that, because uh, it has really allowed me 
to work with Cupertino on, on a number of different things to really get Afterburner just performing beautifully, um, which I'm happy to report it absolutely does. And again, you can you can sort of see here, I've got a you know 8K project and I know that might be kind of hard to read, HLG, HDR, um, and you'll see that it's running at full full resolution and, and playback is just awesome and, and scrubbing is just amazing. So the reason I, I, I sort of brought this up for this Mac to Mac peer to peer, you know, this actually works. I've got a lot of people using this. Um, I won't say it's exactly the same as we can get on, on AWS or some of the other ones. And I don't think that's really on Apple's side. It's just, I think these guys you need to use more Apple metal to really come up to speed and really get this thing going. I think splash top seems to be doing a pretty good job on the enterprise side of getting some great reports back at, at, at how, how well that's, uh, that's working. So anyway, that was, that's one sort of, sort of solution there. Um, another one um, I think works really, really well too. And actually HP's done a pretty phenomenal job in my opinion uh, on their Mac client for what's called Z Central Remote Boost. You don't have to have an HP to use it. It just happens to be free if you own an HP workstation. Um, and I like to show this because I do have a lot of customers that you know might have to tap into a PC um, at work. And this has got full enterprise support and I'm tapping in actually to the HP behind me. And uh, it's it, it performs beautifully. I mean, I can just come in here and uh, all the sound is mapped exactly the way it needs to be mapped. It, it doesn't drop frames. Everything is just absolutely uh, beautiful. So that's, that's, that's another solution that um, a lot of customers are using. So uh, um, concern HP remote boost. Yeah. Any concern about security? Um, well, I mean, honestly, you, you would hit all that before you got in to even touch the computer. So you would go through your, your, your corporate VPN and your Okta, Okta controls and all that stuff before you ever got there. But, you know, you know that, that is one of the, the tricks is to make sure your VPN uh, is not, you know, the same VPN that everybody uh, comes in. If everybody's doing expense reports on the same VPN, a lot of my successful um, uh, installations that I hear customers telling me about are, are when they set up different VPNs for editors and, uh, and, and compositors, um, for example. Um, the other one that is pretty popular just to, just to sort of bring up is Teradici. And you'll, you'll hear a lot about Teradici. And Teradici runs a couple of different ways. You can run it in software. Their Mac client is absolutely fa uh, fantastic, as I'll show you. Uh, you can also run what's known as an Amulet hotkey, uh, George, if that's coming up on the screen, okay. And this is a little zero client box. That's pretty awesome because this also will allow me to, if I have this, I can connect to my Mac in the office using this box too. So if I don't have to have a Mac at home, uh, maybe I've got a PC at home, but I need to get to my Mac. This is hardware Teradici. It's the same thing that's running there. You just don't uh, need a client. Now I will say that if you have a decent, um, you know, Mac, um, you know, I would say 2016 or 2017 and up, uh, the Teradici client software is going to do fine for you. So it works one of two ways. One, you can also just connect to whatever computer you might have uh, on, on your network, right? That just says, okay, I've got access to get into my network. So I'm attaching to another computer in another room and I can go in and run some, you know, GPU test or whatever it is that, that, that I'm running. And it's an excellent um, Mac client, really, really works. Um, really, really works well. Another popular use, and this is probably one of my favorite to show, is connecting to a full-on cloud service. So um, I've got the installations all, all around. So the, there's about eight of them that are all, all around the planet. Uh, and I'll, I'll connect to London in here in a second just to kind of show you guys how well it works. Um, but but it, it, it's amazing to me when you start thinking about where we're going to be in a very short, short time, George. So you know, you're a camera shooter yourself, right? Wouldn't you like to be able to put a 5G pack on your favorite camera and then be able to shoot that straight to a cloud uh, bucket somewhere and then have either proxies go up there or however that transmission is going to work. And then you want to be able to edit wherever that media lands. And then you want to render wherever that media lands. Great way for security, right? So 
I get a lot of questions on how well does this actually work. Um, so let me let me just go ahead and launch this instance and uh, make sure it's uh, all good. I believe I remember the password for this site. There we go. So within about five seconds, I've I've connected to London. I'm on. I'm in. So, and again, it really doesn't make a difference if I um, am using Azure, Google, AWS. You know, a lot of what they run on the back end is very similar. Um, it really just depends on on what you guys are doing from um, from a standpoint of. Uh, of, uh, of workflow for how you configure that workstation. Well, let me ask you, Dave. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Are you connect? Did you just connect to AWS? Out in, in London. Okay. Yep. I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable. It's that fast. It's that quick. So London, it's what's, what's going to happen in a second. Um, and for those of you that don't know, when you're in an enterprise, this is what's known as an enterprise login. So I was, if I was working for Discovery Channel, for example, or NBC, I would have an NBC um, uh, Creative Cloud uh, login because it's controlled by, by enterprise. So this, this now has got to authenticate me. It's now going to talk to my Apple Watch here in a second, and it's going to ask me if I'm there. So I'm going to say, yep, I'm here. That just did um, you know, two-form authentication. It's also going to cause IT to ding me in a minute to ask me if I'm really in London because it appears that that's where I am, right? But anyway, you can see right here, I'm, I'm in. So, you know, now, now that I'm here, I can just say, okay, let me, let me just see if I can just go in and get this edit done. And I, and I, I can just, you know, start to edit. And this isn't any, any slower um, uh, or any really any faster than if I was just um, right there. And it works just amazingly well. So we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, customers kind of kind of going down this path. Um, it looks like it's taken a second because it's actually adding uh, some fonts for me. Uh, actually, I probably should have turned off. Let me just see if desktop sync is on too, because that'll that'll slow down the, uh, the the authentication there. But but anyway, it um, it's 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 pretty awesome that I I can just get in and just say okay, I I want to go ahead and uh, and work this way. The other cool thing is. I can run multiple instances of Premiere at the same time. So um, actually it looks like it might be hung up on authenticating for me, just give that a second. I think it's, yeah, let me just give that a second to come up. Um, for, um, let me just, um, yeah. for just arriving in the attendee, Remember, if you have a question for Dave, just go ahead and put it in the Q&A tab, and the Q&A part is going to be at the bottom of your screen. Now, is this, is this part of, obviously, this is part of um, Enterprise for Adobe? No, this, this is actually just, uh, yeah, it's got to be, it looks like it's hung somewhere. Let me just see what, where, where that's headed. Hold on one sec. Let me just go in and do the typical. Oh, that's really too bad. I don't know if it's someone else tried to log in at, this, at the same time. Let me just close it out. I'll just launch it again. Very strange. Um, anyway, so when it comes up, and, and George, how's that? How's that loading when it comes up? Is is the, is the uh, playback on the system uh, pretty pretty quick? It's clean. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it was just hung up on those fonts. Okay. So anyway, when the when the project comes up, it's a four 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 project. You'll see that I'm running on a Tesla T four, and I can I can come in and just sort of scrub this like so. I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, I'll, I'll bring it up full full screen, and just sort of just show you. And I've got the drop frame indicator, uh, the engineering mode turned on. Absolutely butter smooth. I can stop it, start it, stop it, start it. No problem. So if I need to be able to remember, I'm doing all this in London. This is this is sort of where the future of editing is absolutely headed, right? But I can just kind of come in here and say, okay, I want to start moving some of these files around changing you know cha changing layers around the, the the keyboard mapping is is pretty good it, it knows exactly exactly what it is it needs to do 
but just this ability to to very quickly get things moved around. One of the questions I get when I was coming over here is where does all this stuff sit? It sits on an S3 storage up in, uh, in this case, AWS. Um, and having your storage and your compute power in the same place is what's making this so fast. Like it's absolutely as if I'm there. And the other thing I just want to point out, remember, I'm running this on my Mac. So right. it's not like you have to give up your Mac. And I think this is a really important thing. It's like, okay, look, I'm going to go ahead and run Premiere locally, right? So if I, if I go down and I say, let me, let me launch my, my Mac down here. This is my Mac version. This is my London version. So I've got multiple things running and my Mac is doing a great job of keeping track of this. So I could start a lot of this project on my Mac, get things going and, you know, transfer maybe just the project file, do whatever I need to do. People could review and collaborate. So, you know, it's to me, this, this is, um, this is going to be a big deal and it, it's, it's working um, really, really well right now. A lot of customers are kind of, kind of looking at this again, ma mainly on the, uh, on the enterprise um, but again, working, working really, really well. So um, just wanted to point that out because I, I happen to think that, that a lot of this is the future of, of where we're all going to be um, in a couple of years. It's like we're back to dumb terminals almost, you know? Right. Um, and it, it, it really is a performance. So. Hey, Dave. Yeah. But what I did want to say is um, I've been telling a lot of folks, you know, if you don't know AWS, most of us have Amazon accounts and you have access to AWS. Create an account and start experimenting. Because, you know, for creatives, that's the direction we're going to go in. And what I also say to a lot of folks is, I mean, you could either pay a service provider or you could figure it out on your own and it's not that hard. Yeah, yeah, abso absolutely. So let, let's look at um, a, couple of, a couple of things. Um, let me start with Premiere 14.1, which we just released. And the big feature for 14.1 is what's called productions. Um, so what, what is productions? Uh, you can look at it a couple of different ways. Productions is really for, I would say, large projects um, like you would have on a movie, uh, a film. And it was actually uh, battle tested on Terminator Dark Fate. Um, so as you know, we'll pick a film each year and we'll, we'll kind of massage features like we did with Deadpool and other ones. And then we release those features um, to the public. So, you know, this sort of mimics what a lot of people are used to in an Avid environment where Premiere Pro projects are more like Avid bins. So when I just wanna see what happened on day one, because George, you were working on day one, I can double click on it and it gives me everything in day one. And I can go ahead and start creating you know, a rough cut or whatever I need to on day one. Um, I see that Matt and Todd um, are currently working on this Japan and Prague footage here. So if I wanna see what Matt's up to, I can double click and I can say, okay, well, you know, Matt, Matt's projects here, I'm locked out. So I can't add, add things or take things out of it. Um, if I go look at what Todd's up to, I can see Todd, um, is doing the same thing. So he hasn't even created any sequences yet. Now, I also want to say that there's no cloud involved in this at all. This is all assuming you're on the same uh, shared network. Um, these locks are here because I've put them there. There's a way that we can trick it just to, just to mimic what would happen if I'm in the office with, with Matt and Todd. So in a lot of workflows, they don't want anything sort of touching the cloud. We just want everything local. But I also know who to, who to ring and sort of say, um, hey, Todd, I need you to release day three because I need to get to those, uh, those assets. Now, I can read it. I can look at it. I, I just can't modify um, um, those, those projects. So I, I, I can also go, go look at, let me see what other reels uh, Carl's got uh, set up here. Let's go down to scenes here. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Before we get too far gone, so we have a question from Seth Golden. Yeah. Is S3 data imported as FSX for Windows File Server or imported to EBS on the E2 instance itself? Um, I, I, you can set that up, up either way. So that's really when, when you know, you've got, a, you know, a lot of different choices, choices there. Um, you know, the, the most important thing for us is, you know, if we can get to the volume, we can get to the data. 
there, there are some ways that you can mount volumes that aren't like real, real volume. Like Premiere needs to think, or any Adobe app needs to think that that's a local volume and it's mapped accordingly. So um, file formats and, and how, how it's written and how it's stored doesn't really seem to be um, much of an issue. Um, and all the testing that, uh, that I've done with it. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. So um, I hope that answers, answers his, his, uh, his question. Um, Thanks. And um, yeah. David says uh, good stuff. He's so um, anyway, you can see that um, this project here, I can unlock these, these locks and I can look at it. Um, I, I didn't bother to, to, to link them up there. They are on this system. They're in another folder. But if, if I try to get in and, and start playing around with this, I absolutely can because I'm in a, I'm in a right state here. I couldn't do that if I was on someone else's project. It would allow me to, to pancake those, and if you guys know pancaking, and come over here and I could drag assets from one to the other. It would let me do that, but it wouldn't let me modify anything with, with a lock on it. And it also has, uh, which is really getting a, a great review, it's got cross-project referencing uh, back and forth, which means you, know, you don't get duplication of, of assets. If it's in one asset, the productions panel keeps track of where these uh, where these things are. A lot of times, you'll go look for an asset, and it, it, it might you know. So if you say like reveal and project, it may take you back to a different project than what you're working on. Um, so anyway, it, it's getting you know rave reviews right now. There's there's lots of videos on it, but this was all about uh, Premiere um, fourteen dot dot one. So I just wanted to uh, to sort of throw throw that out there and let you guys see what what productions were all about. Um, I will say they are some some pretty um, unique uh, workflows uh, that sort of get into that. So let's let's jump into um, some features that we just released last week. And uh, one of those I'm happy to report we've been testing this for a long time is ProRes RAW support. So if you guys have an Atomos is, is one of them or a DJI with a, a DJI copter with uh, the Inspire 2 with cameras that support ProRes RAW. That's another one. And then, as I mentioned, Atomos, Nikon's now got support. Uh, Canon GH5's got support. Other, uh, it's not the GH5, it's the other one that they just came out with. So these cameras are coming out with, uh, with, with Atomos support, which is pretty awesome. And if you go over to the master control uh, uh, settings, uh, master effects settings, you can come over here and just, and just start, start, start working with your, uh, with your RAW footage. Uh, absolutely great. Playback is outstanding. It, it does use uh, uh, Apple Metal, uh, and it is fully supported on Windows as well. So uh, ProRes on Windows is also supported, and uh, it is GPU accelerated by NVIDIA. So it just, it just works great. So, so happy to uh, just sort of talk about that. Um, other things that we did, George, I think the last time we had talked about uh, auto reframe, we have for how, how you can take um, 16 by nine media, convert it to, uh, to nine by 16. That's now gotten a lot faster. So we've been, been pretty happy with that. Um, if anybody wants to see that, let me know. But one of the bigger ones I, I thought we'd, we'd talk about, and that's, that's about um, uh, performance. So let me close this project out and talk about um, things that we've been, we've been working on. So I have a quick question uh, for you from Chris Barnett. Yeah, Chris, yep. In Premiere Pro, is it possible to start an image sequence, export, stop, cancel it, and then create another export that continues the image, se image sequence from where I left off? I've been trying the weeks for figure to figure it out. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't think so. But uh, what I would do, uh, and again, I, I've only worked for the company for 25 years, but um, that's not one that I've actually had a request, but I could see that where you would have 10,000 image sequences coming in. I mean, you'd have to figure out a works, you know, just using workspace area um, to do that. I don't know if there's, there's a way to script that, but I, I would go to the moving to Premiere Pro Facebook group since you're on Facebook tonight, George, as well. Um, and just, just ask the question there. We, we've got a bunch of Adobe people that, that watch that. Um, and just, just ask the image sequence uh, question. 
Um, and I'll, I'll try to keep my eye, eye open for that, see if we can get that answer for you. I'm not sure there's a, there, there's a way to do that, but uh, without trying to do it manually to where you can sort of just, just move that. And that's tricky as you, as you probably already know, Chris, with uh, what frame you, you left off on. So uh, by the way, it's also um, one of those things since he brought it up, um, he, you, you can go to the provide feedback here um, which will take you to the uh, to the Premiere Pro page, and you could say, let's just see if anybody has um, anything about image image sequences. So, see, how I've typed this in here. These are people that uh, allow batch image on import. Um, well, that's on import. I think I don't know if yours was. I think you said yours yours was on export. Um, so I don't see it freezes, image sequences. So what you could do is just make your own and then get votes on it. Cause we actually go through this um, and, and parse this, you know, every, every month and sometimes even, even more than that and kind of review what features we're going to be coming out with. So uh, that, that's also a good place to give it attention because uh, in engineering we've used that uh, often. And again, they sync on it monthly. So uh, that's, that's, that, that's a great use for that. So. So one of the things, uh, George, I know you, you and I talk about um, a lot is, is just performance. Um, and people that know me know, I, you know with all this equipment, I'm always testing performance. And we're, we're doing a ton of work right now, both on the Windows side and on the Apple side. And we actually started a lot of work on Metal uh, with Apple on 1014 and did a lot of refinement on 1015, which actually gives you some extra boost. Um, and as you can see, I've got you know, two processors. I'm just on my laptop. Uh, in this case, and and you know some of the work that we had already completed, H.264, you know, scrubbing and playback on metals, really, really, really good, way, way better than it was. And I, I can go ahead and just just click export. And this project is a is a 4K project, you know, with effects. I've got an adjustment layer on there. Let me get this window a little out of the way. And what you want to see is you want to see in my case, this Radeon 5500M, just, just banging it, right? So she's, she's getting close. Uh, we'll always have some reserve, by the way, because we need reserve uh, uh, for the OS and for other things that are going on because we're redrawing US. I always get uh, OS. I get a lot of people that will tell me, how come that's flatlining you know, uh, right here? And it's like that a lot of that is because you know, either you're moving your mouse around or there's graphics moving around. Um, so keep that in mind. But you see how it's hitting both processors, 4K sequence, H.264. Um, you know, I've got some headroom on my on my CPUs here. So we got a nice balanced workflow. Most of the work is being thrown out uh, to the GPU. And, you know, metal taking this at the operating system level is is pretty fan uh, fantastic. And uh, I've got that on a timer that was 55 seconds um, for that. So so pretty fast, you know, having done that. You know, e even just in Premiere 13, it was over three minutes. So um, it, it's really fast. And I get a lot of people that are telling me, um, um, you know, you know, what's what's Adobe's stance on Metal, for example. And by the way, the Windows user, I'll, I'll be addressing you guys in just a second. So on Metal, I just want to point out that when I go to the project settings, you're going to see Metal's recommended. That's what you should be using. Even on an older new Mac Pro, the Cylinder Mac Pro, um, OpenCL eventually is. Whenever you see something that says depreciated, deprecated, it's going away. So we we will probably not have support soon for things like OpenCL. And anytime you see that, we're trying to tell you you need to change your workflow. So right now, any any time you can, Metal is going to be faster. All of our efforts on the Mac are a hundred percent on that. Uh, so just just to get that out of the way. Now, in in contrast, um, we were talking about new features. What have we done for these really you know huge beefy cards? You know, like these Titan cards or t even 1080 cards and things like that. So let me let me jump back over. Thanks to uh, HP Remote uh, Boost here. Let me connect. So. Everything is. Hey, Georgia, it's going to log on to this Windows machine while you're talking. Go ahead. So, we haven't jumped to eGPUs yet. I know we're going to get there eventually, but we, we definitely want to make sure that the Mac guys yeah. get in love here. A absolutely. So, 
Um, so again, you saw dual processors on the Mac, metal, metal running great. When you have a really beefy, um, you know, graphics card, it's really, uh, you know, uh, all about what's happening on that. We now take advantage uh, on Windows of not only CUDA, which was always there, um, but we also take advantage of what's known as NV Inc, uh, ENC, NV Encode, so NVIDIA Encoder. Uh, and we also support AMD. There is, by the way, lots of improvement on the new Mac Pro, which has D500, 700s, uh, uh, and, and so forth. Great, uh, great solution for that um, as well. So you will see some improvement. Um, on the uh, AMD, certainly on the Windows side, they use uh, what's called AMF, their, their uh, media framework. So on the AMD side, so just to, just to point that out, a lot of people are talking about you know, sort of the NVIDIA side. But as you can see here, uh, same project I just had on the Mac. When I'm on a beefier machine, what is this, what is this, this look like? If I hit the wrong key, what does this look like? Um, I'll go ahead and bring up the same export uh, screen. Settings are identical, 4K. Um, by the way, you'll notice, which I forgot to show you on the Mac, it was also there. Um, if, I, if I come into here and say, oh, I forgot. Um, let, let, me, let me go ahead and export this one first because I, 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 I knew I was going to have people want to know what's the difference between, say, Premiere 14.1, the one that I showed you, and 14.2. So I've got this set up. I've got the NV encoder turned off with an engineering switch um, uh, right now just to show you the difference of what you had two weeks ago versus what you just got um, in 14.2. Um, and I, and I, I, I forgot I turned this off earlier, which is actually great. So th this is going to go, go through its encoding process. It's still using, you know, uh, GPU, still using CUDA. Um, you know, it's not in a software only mode. Uh, so so all, all of that is, is exactly what you would expect. And, you know, a 4K two minute uh, project is still faster than real time. It wasn't like this was that slow. This, by the way, is going to take uh, about, about a minute uh, I got a timer running on it now, so it's uh, it's, get, it's getting up to, to the minute now. So probably a minute twelve is what I imagine. A minute thirteen. Let's see where she finishes. But it's still you know still pretty quick for 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 uh, a project uh, you know this this long. So you know respectable and done. And that again a minute thirteen. Just so, so what I'm going to do now is I have to and George go ahead and ask me a question. I can hear you. Let me just go disconnect this for a second because I gotta. I got to do the secret thing behind me where this HP is. So guys, if you have questions, um, go ahead and put them in the Q&A pod. Um, welcome, Louisa. Trip. thanks for coming out, guys. Dave. I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn things back on, George, is what, is what I'm doing right now. So I, so I, I can, uh, I, I have to go into an engineering code mode to turn it, to turn things back on. So I'm going to quit from here. And then and then re relaunch it. So let me let me log back into here for you. Dave, um, many grown man toys. Yeah, well, it's my brain at work, I guess. But just trying to figure out the best way to explain it. It is kind of nice that I can run all these remote things and show both Mac and Windows because um, I, I know people are curious. So what I did is I went back in and I flipped a secret uh, engineering switch in, uh, in, our, in our monitoring system. And that turned all the NVIDIA and AMD stuff back on. Uh, so we can just op open up the same project, make sure all that sort of scrubs, that looks fine. And then again, this is really right now just a just an encode what we're doing. So if you want to get your stopwatches ready, um, and as you as I go down, you see we're hardware encoding. So it sees the hardware is there, and I just hit export, and I'll hit it now. My little stopwatch here. And you see, it's it's already bulleting through that pretty pretty quick. So a minute thirteen, and it's actually faster than what the clock is actually saying. And I don't know. Did you get your timer going, George? I don't know if you hit it in time. No, I didn't. Um... All right. Well, I, I I got it running. I got a clock running in front of me. I can reset it, and we're coming up to twenty two. I got 25.96. So 
a minute 13 versus 25, nine, six, pretty fast. So uh, NV Inc is, is pretty awesome. Uh, uh, AMD uh, AMF is, is, is sort of their, their, uh, their framework to go through that. And you're starting to see a lot of people blog on this about just, just how fast this, uh, this is. I mean, it's, you know, again, it's really only there for H.264, H.265 uh, encoding. By the way, currently it's 8-bit. Eight, it's eight we will be turning on 10-bit uh, support soon for people wanting to do, uh, to do HDR. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, there, we'll talk about HDR in a minute. But uh, anyway, just just a heads up, and we will be working on decode uh, as well. So right now we're on encode. Uh, you'll get just like I was talking about with metal. You'll get just better scrubbing and better playback, regardless on the timeline. We're just constantly fine tuning things, but it, it, it'll get uh, even better on both Mac and Windows uh, platforms. So a lot of work going on around this. Now, one thing that that um, we might get questions on that I, uh, George, that I get questions on a lot, which is, um, look, I've got a 1080 um, and I was thinking about getting a, a 2070 or a 2080. I'm ready, ready to go up to my next graphics card. Am I gonna get a benefit for H.264, H.265 um, uh, exports? And, I, and my answer on that is probably not gonna make NVIDIA too happy. The answer is probably no, because the reason is, is there, just like we had QuickSync, if you remember on the Intel chipset, NV Inc is a dedicated chipset on the NVIDIA, bo NVIDIA boards, um, usually starting around, you know, the, 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 you know, the 1080, 1060, you know, those, those series of cards um, uh, all the way up through, through, through RTX. And uh, uh, you're, the only way you're going to get, you know, maybe a little bit of speed improvement, you could get, you know, 10% might be pushing it. It's just how fast the memory is on that graphics card versus maybe the card that you have. But uh, I, I think if your primary goal is to get to create H.264 proxies, by the way, a lot of people want to be able to create proxies faster. This is a great use um, for that. Going to save you just uh, just a ton of time. So um, any questions on that, George? Or do you think that summed it up? That summed it up. But we do have a question from Seth. Yeah. So the conventional wisdom is that hardware encodings quality still can't match the quality of CPU only. Have you benchmarked image quality for and and then and then see curious if you have part part partly yet for say if you have priority for yet for let's say RTX twenty eighty Ti. Okay, so the answer is yes. We've done a lot of quality uh, comparisons. And I do agree with his statement. That's been an Adobe stance for a long time that software encode um, will, will, get, will get it better. But I think um, it may depend on the media and he may know this as well. Um, it, may, it may depend on the media, you know, there are you know, leaves and grass, um, you know, the, the, the waves that you see there, the, the, uh, the, the jet waves. Um, sometimes you can get some artifacting in there um, I, I, I think you have to go in and, uh, and tweak it and sort of see what, uh, what happens. We've done a ton of that and it's actually been indistinguishable. So I think depending on what your workflow is, sometimes you just want to get one out as fast as you can um, and it's there. And by the way, you can always default back to, uh, to software mode by, uh, by turning hardware mode off. And again, just to uh, remind people where that, where, where that switch is, you, you can just scroll down, same on the Mac. You're gonna scroll down here and say, I just wanna to go to software encode. So I would say, you know, do some tests yourself. Um, you know, let us know what you think. Again, you know, the Facebook moving to Premiere Pro is always a great page. So I, I, would, I would tell us, you know, let us know. We, we did delay this quite a bit because that was a concern to make sure that this was, this was really good. I will say, you know, early on, you know, some of the other systems out there that were doing hardware and code before we were, we looked at that and we could clearly see that ours was better under software, but they had a good argument, which is like creating proxies or just going to YouTube. You'll probably, by the time you send it up to YouTube and they do what they do to the file, in many cases, you may not be able to tell the difference one from the other. So, so we just want to say, you know, here's fast, here's the highest quality right now. They're, they're, they're pretty close. So, and I, I also just want to add one more thing. We're not done yet. I already know what's on the roadmap for this. It's only going to get better and faster from here. Yeah, George. So uh, Seth says, uh, thank you. He said, perfect for proxies. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, excellent. 
uh, great, uh, great question. Um, all right, let me just disconnect that one, and I'll just quit quit out of that. And again, if you if you think you um, you know want to uh, want to get into that, oh, and I I, I didn't uh, I didn't mention it, but um, or I was going to show it. I did mention it. Uh, you know, ProRes raw actually i should i should mention that because with with uh ex as exciting as that is and i know apple's just uh very happy that we, we finally got support i know the camera manufacturers um are very happy we, we we finally got support um for that as well um especially my friends jeremy and all my buddies at, uh, at hey, Atomos. Um, yep I have a side note question. So, uh, do you have that that camera hooked up to ATM? Uh, I do. Because yep. pretty your image looks pretty good. I'm I'm geeking a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know it, it it took a little bit of rehearsal, but I uh, I set that up. I, I knew you'd dig it, and it's a uh, it's a Canon um, uh, seventy one hundred five. So lens. Yep, on the lens side. On a Ursa. Yeah, I'm I'm actually using a micro studio camera so kind of in black magic yeah I'll, I'll say that this camera behaves itself if this is what you need because maybe you're doing a professional broadcast camera is beautiful it stays on it doesn't get hot i mean it's a it, black magic did a beautiful design um on this camera i gotta i gotta hand it to him it's uh, and what, what microphone are you using i am on the road uh i think they call it the N nt1 i think it's called uh or, or the nt USB, phenomenal mic. I mean, I think we all know Road, Road rocks it. Yeah, I'm j I just wanted the audience to know what you're doing back there because I know you're doing most of your uh, demos for clients from home right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing a lot of workflow discussions. There are demos in some cases and more discussions. But anyway, I wanted to make a, make a note um, right here. Might be hard to read, but for my Windows users out there, you do have to download a ProRes RAW installer. Um, that is literally, I don't know if it's like 20 or 200 K, it's a tiny file, but it basically puts the bits on windows that you'll need in order to, uh, to run that. So Apple's made that, uh, that available. You'll see the information in the, um, in the, in, in the readme file. So I just, I just wanted to point that out that, that you need to be able to, uh, uh, to download that, uh, before ProRes raw will, will work. Cause I know there's a ton of people very excited about that format. Um, and also for, for users that are going to be in a mixed environment where you want to be able to get back to your Mac or get to a Windows machine, if that's what you have at work or whatever, works, uh, works pretty fantastic. So the other thing, George, we were, we were going to talk about, um, probably one of, my, one of my last topics, and we can sort of kind of go from there for things people might want to talk about, um, and that is Beta Prime. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to click on my Creative Cloud icon up here. And I'm just going to look over here and I see I've got some updates. Um, if I go to my all apps um, and I kind of scroll down here, um, I, I can you know, see that uh, I've got some updates coming. Uh, if I click on the beta icon here, which you'll have available to you, um, these are all puts all my betas in one place. And it looks like you know, Premiere and After Effects had, a, uh, had an update today as well. I'm on the Photoshop pre-release, of course. And I, I, I can just update those whenever I feel like it. Now, there are updates that come out sometimes every day there is an update. So I could, I could take the time to update that, but, but and it actually updates pretty, pretty quick. Um, they, they've really got that figured out. But let me just go ahead and launch it. And let's just talk about what this looks like. Now, you don't have to sign up for this, for the video products. Um, we've made them available to all, to, to, um, all of you guys uh, and, uh, and members out there. It, uh, it's been a great program. We have seen a huge spike in its, uh, in its usage. George, I don't know if you've had a chance to get on it. I think I've talked to Louisa. She's had the opportunity to start, start doing some testing and it, it's just been great. So if I, if I jump into, um, let's just jump into a project here. And I wanna show you the difference is, um, let me just open up some, some media here. Uh, let's op op open up this file here. Um, up in the upper right-hand corner, there, there's a, a beaker. And when I click on the beaker and I go to here, it'll tell me everything that I get to test in the beta. These are actually our engineering notes. So we're sharing all of this with you now. You even get the actual feature number, you know, feature 148 deals with uh, 
you know, hard, hardware transmit devices that are required to monitor HDR content. And that's going to work directly with your AJA, your, uh, your black magic device. Um, so I, you know, that's a, that's a feature number. That's, um, you know, the way that we track these things. Um, and, and just to kind of show you how, how you might test this, we are working on a whole new HDR workflow I'll get into at a, at a later time, but just to entice you, you know, you can take a, in this case an 8K um, uh, HLG HDR file, you know, sort, sort of scrub through that, by the way, it's playing beautifully. Um, and if I just come up here to sequence settings, you'll notice without giving too much away, it automatically recognizes that as a REC 2100 HLG. Um, and, and everything you would expect that Premiere would need to do to be in that format uh, and that ability to operate is there. So um, I'm not gonna get into it because and it's, it's as good as you want it to be. I'll, I'll make that promise to you. I think the workflow back and forth between um, uh, you know, DaVinci uh, Resolve back and forth, uh, you know, the color will, will do what you expect it to do. So that's going to be a good workflow for a lot of people, especially if you've got some of the Blackmagic uh, monitoring gear um, as well. So I'm pretty excited about this. Again, re read the beta, re you know, read the notes. The other one I'll just sort of um, let, let you guys uh, uh, check out is there's, there's some other cool things in here for, um, for scenes uh, detection. So I'm not, I, I won't get in and show you where it is because I want to entice you to download it and play with it. But as you can see this clip here, you know, I want to come in here and, and not have to, to manually make this cut. So we're going to use the power of AI, Adobe Sensei, to scan this, automatically cut it for me. George, think about what that would do for your interviews that are all on one take. We can get in and use some logic to make cuts um, and automatically turn that into about 30 clips. So, so that, that's another cool one I'm excited, excited about. And then the other one is, uh, that's, that's really neat, um, that that's coming and I and this is the one I thought I'd share with you guys because I'm pretty excited about it and I think with COVID it's going to be a big deal and that's really getting people um, you know to take a closer look at Adobe stock um, and you can see here that um, I'm in the audio panel and I have the ability to come over here and select whatever whatever mood uh, I'm looking at so I might want you know something um, a bit uh, let's see do we want dreamy inspiring powerful let's see how about mysterious now is that going to be part of the um, of your subscription well it, it, yeah it is it's going to be part of your subscription and obviously you're going to have the opportunity to buy the music because you got to pay the artists that do it you know we we, right. we certainly don't uh, don't own it but uh but you know you can just go in and start start parsing through some of this stuff and where where it's different i'll tell you that's uh that's pretty cool is it is this ability to hit play and be able to some stop that right where you are maybe i want to jump ahead in, in my sequence and start auditioning that without having this need to drag it to the timeline now there's a whole lot more features uh coming for this i'm just teasing you a little bit T take a look re read the notes um, and uh, and see what's coming. So that's just a little play on what the beta and what the beta support uh, that we're offering. It's more than just saying, hey, you know, we think we fixed a, a bug X or whatever is going on. Uh, let, let's let you in and take a look at it. Now the other thing is we've kind of come to the conclusion, at least right now, of maybe not coming out with two massive massive releases each year. How about when a feature is ready, we just release it like we did with ProRes Raw. We're like, you know what? We don't want to hold that. Dave, Let's go ahead and do that now. Yeah. Dave, are you done demoing? If you want to stop sharing so we can put you back to full screen. Yeah, absolutely. We can uh, go do that. But yeah, so, so just, to, just to sort of raise that point, you're going to start to see us um, re really start getting into um, a lot more releases that have key features and not just a dot release that has a, has a bug fix. So if a feature is ready and it's ready to go, we think it'll do people some good. Uh, it's done well in the beta testing, then our plan is just to get it out there as soon as we can, so. So I have an external question for you. So QNAP, what, some folks are finding it's still sluggish with Premiere Pro. Is there anything you wanna 
add to that as to why QNAP is a little bit sluggish? That's interesting. So I use a QNAP myself. Now I am running it on, on 10 gig E um, and it works pretty good for me. So I, I guess we'd have to figure out, um, you know, you know, there's, I mean, QNAP of course has lots of settings. I, you know, the model that I'm running um, has, I think it's the 1273, 1273 th Thunderbolt model. And I've got uh, four SSDs in there that sort of help me with the, with the caching, right? So I've got, you know, there's eight terabytes of, of SSD in there that just help me move projects. And uh, I run my productions demo on that for small work groups. I also run what's known as an SNS server, uh, their Evo server, um, which is pretty phenomenal too that uh, that kind of bumps that up in, in a category but between those two both are running pretty good for me and I run them all at 10 gig e so I guess I'd have to figure I, out is this issue uh, formatting of the drive and how it's set up I think he's running his over Thunderbolt oh oh Thunderbolt well yeah yeah I, I run mine over, over the network yeah th that's interesting has he gotten you know any support has he gotten anywhere with uh with QNAP, I mean, I, I can usually get through to those guys, but I, I had questions initially. I think he's he, he has reached out, but I'll definitely um yeah to him and see. I I, I do like that do like that unit a lot. So I mean, I I think their products are, are are pretty awesome. But I will say, you know, that dashboard that they have gives you a ton of choices. Um, it may be easier to his point to sort of say, hey, if I'm Thunderbolt, limit limit my choices, right? Versus everything I'm doing, which is network share, so. So one of the things that we, we covered, I know we covered a lot on Windows. So what folks that are on Macs, should yeah. they, I mean, obviously Windows is getting a lot of love because obviously it's Windows, you could do more, the boxes or you could build a super speed box. What, what, what should a Mac guys be focused on right now? Well, I mean, so you raise a couple of good points. So one of the things that I've, I've made pretty clear of over the years with a lot of people, you know, the sweet spot for Mac or Windows, it makes no difference, is about 16 core. So a lot of people will spend a ton of money on getting, you know, high-end dual procs, thinking everything's going to run faster. And the fact of the matter is, with 16 core, even 12 core, you can throw a lot at it in, in Premiere and you're not gonna tap it out. Like you get you get a point of diminishing returns. So even though on the Windows side, we can, we can get a ton of upside with different processors and stuff, at least as far as the system specs go, when I'm meaning, meaning upside, I don't see a whole lot of performance increase in Premiere by the, it's very different than say the way, you know, Resolve works, which is, you know, pretty intensive. Cause you can get to a point in Resolve where if your hardware isn't good enough for what you want it to do, it just isn't gonna work, right? So we're, and, and that's just the environment that they're in. That's, you know, it's not, and I'm not making a comment on how it's engineered. That's just that environment. And the, it's an expectation that, that, they, that they're pretty clear about. We're gonna set this for you. Us, we need to work on, you know, older Macs, ThinkPads, you know, e e even the older Mac Pro, the cylinders that we were talking about, and sort of have this balanced workflow. Where some of this is going to change, um, if, and the Mac users will be really happy to know this, and for those people that did purchase a 28-core Mac, for example, and even on the, on the, on the Windows side, After Effects is going to go multi-threading, because um, right now it's single-threaded, uh, and I've always advised a high clock, and that last year's Adobe Max conference, I actually uh, showed uh, a prototype, uh, uh, an alpha version of After Effects running on multi-threading, hitting about 110 cores. It was pretty amazing, or threads, I should say. And it was absolutely wild to sort of watch what happens. So there's going to be some workflows that will, that will benefit from that. But when you look at the way you work, George, maybe some of the other ones do, I, you know, how much After Effects do you do versus how much Premiere you, and Audition and, and Resolve and all the other things that you're doing, there's probably a pretty even balance, right? So you just need a system that says, you know, I, if I go heavy on one side, it might hurt me on the other side and I'm kind of wasting money. I'd rather put more money in the memory or, or uh, NVMe. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that kind of storage for faster caching and faster app launching and so forth. So yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think on the Mac side, you know, the Mac users should be pretty happy right now. I mean, I'm, I'm playing back 8K uh, media on the new Mac Pro, uh, the, one, the one I've got from, uh, from MBS, uh, with, with software only mode. 
I don't drop any frames. That's pretty impressive. I haven't been able to do that on my Windows machine yet. Let me just make that clear. So let me say that again. 8K ProRes RAW playing on the new Mac Pro in software only mode, I can play it without dropping frames. That's, that's impressive. So, so engineering wise, there's a lot of homework going on in there. It's pretty amazing. And when you get in and you start tapping that, um, you know, and again, when you start running some of these performance tests and you're bringing up the performance monitors that, that I did, remember the GPUs are not typically gonna spike unless you're in a GPU to, um, workload. So your effects need to be GPU. And a lot of things are, by the way, you know, you can get in there and turn on Mercury, uh, the indicator to tell me which, which ones are there and it's fast. So um, I, on that one test that I did where you saw things spiking, that was just me applying Lumetri to that adjustment layer just to get that to spike. Uh, and it and absolutely works. Scale, rotation, any of the transform controls, uh, the intrinsic effects, all of those will be accelerated uh, by GPU. So that's the way to get more power um, out of your out of your Mac. So, um, and again, I got to go back. Just one other statement: you got to be running if you can, 1014 or 1015 to really get a lot of benefit out of that, uh, because that's what we optimize for. There's a lot of people on older Premiere; uh, they might need to be for work, and they're 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 just stuck on you know, 10, 12 or 10, 13. And, you know, Apple's made it very clear that this is where they're headed. And we just said, you know what? We're just going to follow suit. And I already mentioned about OpenCL kind of being deprecated. So. So let's, um, let's touch on Frame.io. I know uh, that integration happened a few months back. Anything else coming up that you guys are going to, you and the, the Frame.io team is going to improve on? Um, well, I mean, I, I would love to take, you know, some of the credit for that, but I got to hand it to the frame IO guys. I mean, those guys are kind of rocking it right now. They, they understand workflows. Um, I, I think things are great. Some of the comments I get on frame IO are, you know, there are smaller work groups that are out there, you know, people kind of want, you know, maybe a subscription, um, you know, their service for smaller work groups. I, I have had customers, you know, I don't really get into how the pricing works on some of that stuff. Uh, but I will say no one's ever really complained uh, at the integration and how well it works. They've done a phenomenal job. And, and I will just do a little bit of bragging on Adobe. We have the best frame IO solution out of any of the other ones out there, just because of how integrated our um, APIs are with our panel system. And I've, I've shared panels with you guys before transcriptive, you know, pond five's got a panel, you know, and uh, uh, the, the um, beat maker, you know, all these guys have, we have about, about 500 panels that are out there right now with just customers just creating it. Even uh, ones like I've got a, um, a really fun uh, Insta 360, um, 360 camera that I can kind of throw. It's pretty awesome. Uh, Insta 360's also got these, uh, you know, little cameras that I can clip on. Well, they have a panel, right? So I go into Premiere, I can get to all my settings. Um, uh, even uh, I mentioned uh, SNS. Um, uh, the Evo system, they've got a panel. So all these panels work really great, but I will hand it to Frame.io, back to your original question. It's a beautiful interface. They get to take a lot of advantage. It resizes well, behaves well. Nothing but kudos to that team. I think the pricing on Frame.io is pretty fair. I mean- It is fair, I, I agree. I got rid of Dropbox, so that kind of compensated for some That's, of the cost. Yep. I mean, with all the transfer speeds within Frame.io. Yeah, I think my, my comment on, on price, um, and I think they'll get there eventually, is just you got to kind of get people introduced to what it is and how that's really going to benefit them. And especially if you're in a husband wife team or you're just in a small team, um, we had already talked about, you know, QNAP is great for, for those, those types of workflows. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, people just need to get out and, exp and experience it. By the way, you know, if you haven't tried Frame.io trials and all that, get out there and do it. I mean, you'll be, you'll, you'll be blown away with it. With, and, I mean, George, you use it with your clients, right? Just for sign offs and approval. Oh, for sure. I don't use I don't use anything else for approvals now. Just frame IO. By the way, I think if you get paid faster, if if you got down to a net sixty, I'll just be nice and say net sixty rather than a net six months. Uh, it's already paid for itself, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I say to all the folks that I encounter, I was like, look, build it into your project. I mean, if you're constantly yeah. working, you know, build it into whatever you're doing. You know, it's the cost of doing business. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it, it's tight. And if you haven't seen it, 
uh, get up on their their uh, website and take a look at it. And and you know it obviously is supported in Final Cut. It's supported in Resolve. Um, if you use those products, you should go out and look at those as well. Uh, again, I will just brag on our engineering that it is tight in Premiere. <laughs> she looks good. <laughs> hey, they did all the work. We didn't really do anything but but give them the tool set. So. We'll have to get. I'll have to get Emery to come on DDC Live. Um, yeah. I've I've interviewed him at NAB, but I haven't been able to catch up with him. But um, yeah, well, those guys are busy. Literally. Anything else you want to drop on them, drop on us before we get out of here? No, no, I I think that's it. I mean, I don't know if the other panelists have got questions or uh, if they want to pop on and say hello, or or I don't know if they're locked out or not. I'm not sure if everyone else is in camera, have cameras, so they might not be able to jump on and say hello. I know Louisa's but, uh, got a camera. <laughs> I know she's. What we will do, and I'll announce this, we're going to do a happy hour. That way everyone could just come hang out. No demos. No. So we'll do a happy hour soon. Oh, that's good. A little Brady Bunch style happy hour and just sort of see people talking. Yeah. Bring your own beverages in the background. That's it. I'll do it. Well, yeah, George, thank, thanks for having me. You know, uh, I'm, uh, I love rooting for the home team and you've done a phenomenal job uh, with District Digital Creatives. Uh, always happy to, uh, to address the group and, uh, you know, go D.C. Well, you know, I, I'm just going to say this before we, we, we go out of here. I don't know what's going to happen in the coming months. And this is the, this is a good way for us to still connect. We'll do some happy hours. You know, we'll still be able to connect that way. But, you know, you know, I'm always bringing the wifey and son son with me. So, you know, that's not going to be feasible for the foreseeable future. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm looking forward to Sonny having this place open. So, yeah, that, yeah, I, I, I mean, I you know, right now we can't that can't happen. So. Sonny, if you are there watching, we're still looking forward to coming out and opening your place up. And yeah, and, and I'll throw one more thing out there. You know, we got some cool things coming on on the Mac, so we're working on some fun stuff. So may, maybe we'll come back and uh, sort of sort of do some dedicated stuff for those guys. You 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 just said maybe there is no maybe with you not coming back. Well, well, yeah, there you go. I'll I'll be back. You know me. Yeah, keep keep the love coming. We'll do. Uh, um. Thank you very much for coming out tonight, guys. Um, Dave, it's always appreciate you uh, working with DDC. For everyone in the attendee, thanks for coming out. For all of you watching on Facebook, until next time.